All right, so there'll be some that I will give you the equation or you balance it, you have to solve, and then there'll be some like this, I give you the equation, you have to balance it, and then some that you have to write the equation and then balance it and go through and all that good stuff. Does anybody need me to work this one through? No, we good? Parker, you still have, don't you still owe me some stuff? Yep, you bet you, I think it's more than one thing, so make sure you, do you have to take the test too? Okay, you, can, oh, you can't do all that, just the ones you have to come today, just going to get some stuff done. Okay, I'll look at you in a minute, I'll look and see what you, all you have left. All right, so today we are going to refresh our memory on molar mass because we use it as a conversion factor when we're doing stoichiometry. So there's not really a particular place on your notes, but if you kind of go where we finished up yesterday, there should be some space at the bottom that you can kind of fill in. Adrian, you good? Did you get that answer? Huh? Did you get the answer? Uh huh. Okay. All righty. So, so molar mass, and it's sometimes called formula mass. Is the total mass of all the atoms in a compound or element. It may, because it may not be a compound, it may just be an element. And remember, you are going to be taking your numbers off the periodic table and you need to round them to two places past the decimal. And then when you add them all up, that also needs to be two places past the decimal. And that's probably the thing where people make the biggest mistake is the rounding. That's still something that, pe that people struggle, struggle with. If you do the practice and you're messing up on the rounding, you'll catch that in the practice and then you'll be able to ask me and fix it or fix it yourself. So our units for this are going to be grams per one mole. And our number will go where that X is. When we fig figure up our calculation, it'll be, it'll be uh, right there with the grams. So the number you add up always goes with the grams. A one always goes with the moles. And that's gonna become important tomorrow as we start using this as a conversion factor. When you figure it up, it's always gonna be per one mole. All right. If it's an element, you just take it straight off the periodic table. Those are the easy ones. Thank you. When you have a diatomic, you have to double that. And we'll, we should be able to look at some of those tomorrow or Friday. All right, so let's just start with an easy one. I'm gonna do sodium chloride. So each time you have a capital letter, that's a new element. So in this case, I have two elements, sodium and chlorine. And I just have one atom of each because I don't have any subscripts. So now is where we're gonna get our number off the periodic table. So look at your green sheet and write down what you would use for the mass of each of those. Remember, we're not using the atomic number, you're using the mass underneath. We're gonna get to two places past the decimal. Adrian, look on your green periodic table and get the mass for those two elements. Like I said, there's no particular place on your notes for this. You should just, but you have extra space over under what we did yesterday to write that in. All right, what did y'all get for sodium? 22.99. And when I multiply it through, and then what'd you get for chlorine? 
35.45. Same thing, I'm gonna multiply it through and then I just simply add them up. And that's gonna give me my total molar mass for sodium chloride, 58.4 grams per one mole. So sometimes you may have the formula, sometimes I may just give you the name. So we'll look at one more that has a little bit more. Things to do with it. All right, let's say we're gonna find the molar mass for iron two phosphate. All right, remember that Roman numeral tells you that this is a plus two, it's kind of like a little shortcut. And then phosphate, you would have to look on your ion sheet and it's a minus three. So they're not equal to each other. So I need to give them some subscripts to make it equal. So you can kind of think of as the charges switching places. So in other words, Fe is iron, it needs the three. Phosphate is PO4, I need to put it in parentheses and it's the one that needs the two. So now I have a positive six on one side and a negative six on the other, so they balance each other out. Three capital letters, so three elements. So Fe for iron, how many atoms of iron do I have? Three. P for phosphorus, and how many atoms do I have for that? Two. And then oxygen, I would have eight. All right, so now look on your periodic table and get your molar masses for those three. So what did y'all round iron to? 55.85 and phosphorus 30.97 and oxygen ends up being 16. All right, so we just multiply through. And here I have 61.94 and lastly 128. Add that all up together and I got 357.49 grams per one mole. Is that what y'all got also? All right. Y'all remember when we did this earlier this year? So um, you have time to practice. You can practice on these or you can pull out your mold to mold practice and work on that for the quiz tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the mold uh, quiz and then Friday we'll have a quiz over this. So like I said, both quizzes should this week are pretty easy. So hopefully we'll make some hundreds. They should have a low quiz average. Bring that up a little bit. If y'all have any questions, let me know. If you have a question, probably somebody else has that same question.